from the Sands Convention Center, Las Vegas, Nevada. Extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube. Covering AWS reInvent 2015. Now your host, John Furrier. Okay, everyone, you're watching theCUBE here live in Las Vegas for Amazon reInvent, Amazon Web Services, this is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's media's flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. Join my co-host for this segment, Brian Gracely, our big data, I mean, I'm cloud analyst at wikibon.com, our research team on SiliconANGLE. Next is Hillary Coplo McAdams, President of New Relic, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, it's first great time to the, be here. First time on theCUBE, so we're going to go rapid fire. Okay. We, love, we love New Relic. The founder is a musician, which we love, yes. love his style. Yes. He still codes. Yes. Great story there. Um, he sings. He sings, he's creative, <laughs> but he's grown a big business. You guys had great success. Yes. The DevOps movement, really at the beginning, now is mainstream. This show here yeah. puts an exclamation point on agility, DevOps, this was a cult six, seven years ago, yeah. now mainstream. Yes. How is that affecting your business? What are you guys doing? What's the growth strategy? Where do you guys go from here? Well, that's a great question. I mean, we're hearing it here at the conference. It's all about DevOps. Agility, freedom is a word that people are using, which I really <laughs> admire that word, and I think it's appropriate. Um, we're in service to that. You know, Lou founded the company on this concept that we could help developers what we're calling at the conference builders, what we call internally artisans. These renaissance men and women who are building the new applications of the future, these digital experiences, and we're going to help drive that process. What DevOps really means is simplicity, right? Making it so much simpler, and that's what New Relic stands for. That's why our offering's in the cloud. That's why we've coined this idea of software analytics, so there was a yep. category called application performance monitoring. We think it's a much bigger question than is my software working? We think the bigger question is, is my software working and what does that customer experience actually look like? Yeah, and you guys pioneered that software analysis. I remember I was there at the, at the events when, they, when, when New Relic was small, but back then that was kind of like looked, viewed as a marketing slogan, but the reality is you guys were actually doing the big data-like an, an analytics for developers. Yes. Really kind of a unique beachhead. How has it grown from there? Because we've seen companies like Splunk, for instance, go from doing log file analysis to moving up the stack to high value, high yield analytics. Yeah. How, how is that working for your business? Because you guys now are moving into that same territory of high yield analytics because the developers are writing the apps. Yes. So, so how does that translate? So let me, there are two aspects to how that translates. First of all, we're really helping customers of all sizes think about these digital experiences and the measurement and software analytics piece. So while we were known as a developer or SMB company, actually uh, a lot of our growth is coming out of our enterprise segment. So some of the largest companies in the world, most of the media companies use New Relic to really look at those experiences. And the questions that they're asking are things like, who's coming to our website? What kind of content are they interested in? If they're in a SaaS application, what features are really helpful to the customer and what features do they completely ignore? And we're providing answers like that to product managers, to chief digital officers, to executives that frankly, it's been a very black box experience prior to this. They haven't had those answers yeah, yeah. or they've worked really hard to get those answers. Well, they see breakthroughs too. That gets yes. their attention. Yes. Yes. Okay, so I got to ask the business question because you've been very successful. You've been the mastermind behind the revenue of New Relic. That's been been uh, was uh, kind of told to me prior to uh, interviewing you. I'm like, oh, she's going to be she's been the revenue uh, mastermind. How do you how did you do that? Because it's very difficult to be a pioneer in something and nail the pricing and nail the growth behind it because you're always uncovering new value to customers. Right. And so it's always, if you overcharge, right. you could lose it. If you undercharge, you're not pricing the value. Yeah. How did you balance that and how do you look at that to, in today's world? Yeah, so when we think about our offering, the first thing we think about is frictionless. That's kind of a core principle. And it doesn't just apply to pricing, it also applies to the accessibility of the service. So we design the product so that in the first 60 seconds, you actually get value out of it. That's really important. You be, before your wallet is even thinking about opening itself, you're seeing value from New Relic. 
In addition to that, we want to keep our pricing model as simple as possible so that customers can consume the offering as they need it and feel that they're getting value out of it. So we really think about frictionless, which equates to this idea of simplicity. And as we brought in our solutions, I don't know if you've kept up with New Relic, but two years ago we were really known for server monitoring and application performance monitoring, but we've built out this platform where we have an analytics solution, we have synthetic solution, we have mobile solutions and browser um, performance monitoring so you can understand what's going on in the browser. As we built that out, what we've said to the customer is, we have a platform that you can make use of if you'd like to, and most of them are opting in to do that. This is the first time that a single provider has given them that level of visibility across what is becoming increasingly a more complex architecture. Yeah. We heard about it this morning, hybrid architectures. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and the data is critical on that because you provide value quickly, get a frictionless transaction, get a relationship, provide some value, and then the data itself becomes it's a very key asset there. Mission critical, and we give visibility to that data. Yeah, one of the things that's really interesting to me, so we've, we've covered Amazon for a long time. Uh, their insight into what their customers are doing is, it, it gives them that, Andy talks about as a flywheel. Every enterprise we talk to is saying, look, I realize I've got to build new applications, I've got to differentiate on technology. Yes. You guys have a, an incredible amount of insight into not just helping an individual customer, an individual, but kind of what the industry's doing. How much do you, are you seeing their business leaders come to you going, what are the trends? How can you guys help us beyond just an app? I mean, are, are you becoming sort of a, a business level consultant uh, in this transformation as well? We'd like to think of ourselves that way. I don't know if we're always achieving that goal as yet, but what I, when I think about the core work we're doing, we're helping every company become a software company, whether that was their origin or not. Yeah. Um, so we do get those questions about how do we think about this. Um, you mentioned DevOps. DevOps is more than just a process, it's also a mindset yeah. shift, and so we spend a lot of time talking about what that looks like and sharing best practices from other customers. We'll even match make customers yeah. to meet up together to share uh, their journey. Um, but at the end of the day, I think what we're trying to do is help customers understand what data can be revealed to them that can help them make better business yeah. decisions. You said something so fundamental. Every company is thinking about their brand as it relates to the digital experience and that is really kind of the core trend we see. Right. It's the small ones and it's the largest companies in the world. Right, right. So talk about the public uh, offering, the IPO, yeah. okay? Because now yeah. you're a public company. Right. You're trading on the, on the higher end of your 52 week high. Yeah. Okay, the market's kind of weird right now. I mean, but, but your, your software just went public. Yeah. Jerry Chen from Greylock, who was one of the uh, firm invested in Pure Storage, um, and I were talking about a concept called blitzscaling, which is a, a course that Greylock's teaching at Stanford, how to scale up your, your organization. And we asked the question, I get the consumer thing, there's all kinds of things that are unique to consumers scaling up that, yeah. but the enterprise is harder. How do you go to the next level, and, and what's your plan at New Relic? Because, um, that's going to be a big issue. You're now public, so you have the, the trading volume, yeah. you have now a marketplace that's validating your value. Yes. So you got to get the revenues on the board, right. so we see that. Yeah. But what's your growth strategy? How are you going to take New Relic to the next level? What's your blitz scaling strategy to, to scale up even further growth? Okay, well, first of all, going public was fabulous, <laughs> and I've always been associated with public companies, so it feel, feels very comfortable to be in a public company. So we have really two strategies, I should say three. Um, we started globalizing about two years ago, so we'll continue to globalize, and we do serve markets all over the world, which is really interesting and um, keeps us very attuned to trends. We also focus on uh, three major segments, developers, you know, the builders, the artisans, small businesses, and enterprises. And we actually have separate go-to-market uh, motions for each of those segments so that we can deliver to them the way they want to be serviced. Yeah, tailored um, to them. Tailored to them, yeah, and they have very different experiences and needs, although we will separate marry teams, them. Separate teams, so separate motions and teams, or? Yeah, yes. Okay. Yeah, so a developer really wants to self-serve 
um, experience. They don't want to talk to a salesperson, but they might want to talk to somebody in community or technical yeah. support. So yeah. we're not going to force a salesperson to talk to a More developer. Organic, communal, yes, yes. that's the community. Right, <laughs> let me make my own decisions, yeah, which yeah. we really yeah. respect. Um, and then um, the third piece is, it's really about our product offering. You've seen us brought in our offering. Part of what we did in the year before we went public was we brought new offerings to market and design this platform. And so as we go out to customers, where we really typically start is around an application that's mission critical that there's some initiative in the company that says this is critical for this season or this launch or this reinvention of the company and we drive to help them deliver that application successfully. And then we're brought back in for a much broader set of strategies, many of which support the very work that this conference is all about, which is moving workloads to the public cloud, embracing hybrid architectures, which have become increasingly complex. Um, so if they're spawning all these microservices to provide a personalized experience for customers, we're going to support that. If they're launching a mobile application, like we saw on stage today, we're going to support that. And that's a big part Internet of the of growth things. strategy. Internet of things? Internet of things. <laughs> Probably sometime in the future, no Maybe stated tomorrow. direction on Maybe that. Maybe tomorrow? Maybe tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> well here, we're hearing some rumors. No, but that's a big thing. So the developer mindset is also key. You guys, been, yeah. you guys won that hands down. Well, you but win that over and over again. You yes. have to keep winning it. So IOT is at a new class of developers because you know, we see high school kids making their own clocks, yeah. going to school, getting thrown in handcuffs. But there's a whole maker culture out yes, there. Yes, there is. And that's hardware kind of tinkerers yes. who now are going to write software. Do you see that as a new class of developers or a same model I or can't new say I've thought about it that much. I mean, it's been interesting to talk to people about and certainly we partner with a lot of companies where Internet of Things is a new strategy, but I think we're going to watch it evolve. Yeah. I think the here and now is around the digital, ex kind of the classic software digital experience yeah. um, and that's keeping us plenty busy. So, so, go ahead. Yeah, no, we hear all the time, you know, uh, microservices, you know, these new applications, they're, you're going to build them faster, they're going to help your business faster. Do, do people grasp the concept, whether it's a developer or a line of business, that, that the partners they work with have to be moving at that same time? I mean, you guys deliver so much information in real time. Do people grasp that that whole ecosystem around them needs to be really in real time to stay in sync? I think, I mean, they're learning that, and yeah. I think the market will demand that. I think the winners will be the people who deliver their real-time experience, cloud scale, cloud speed, I like to call it. Um, what's, everyone the, what's the aha moment when they, when they realize, like, this, this is going to change the business? I mean, give us an example of somebody who's just been like, we, you know, we saw some applications, some examples today in the keynote, but like, what are, what are the examples you use all the time that somebody goes, this application just changed the business? So, well, one example that you stimulated was healthcare.gov, you know, when that application started working. Yeah. That was the aha moment for New Relic, but you're really talking about a company when they have an aha yeah. moment. I'm trying to think, um, most of these are what I would call burst applications. You know, there's some sort of bursting event. Yeah. They're going out, they might have, uh, it might be a media company that has a one-time event that has a huge spike, and it works. Yeah. Just like that, it performs beautifully and it's, it's typically dealing with millions of consumers and it works and that's an aha moment for them. Super Bowl ads and all Super sorts Bowl, of things like exactly, that. Exactly, yeah. like high risk, high stakes, you know, be, yeah. very branded experience. Those are the big ones. Um, some of the um, application experiences specific to what New Relic offers aren't as sexy because it's really about the head up time or there was mitigation of a potential issue. Yeah. People don't talk about that as much. Right, 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 right. <laughs> they don't get as excited publicly about it, but they're very excited in Well, they're inside. certainly not excited if it doesn't work. Because right. now you have the downside consequence right. that can be quantified. You're fired, yeah. loss of you know, sales. I mean, that's going to be the downside of bad operational planning. Yeah, 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 they don't like to talk about that. The successful launch people will talk about. So anything related to a company launch yeah. or a seasonal launch or some, you know, the yeah. World Cup or something like that, people get super excited when yeah. those applications yeah. work. Well, we've, we've been talking all week. I mean, there's, there's this constant challenge. Every year we come out here and, you know, Andy announces new things and people start to go, okay, which companies that affect? 
we've been saying all week, the companies that are focused on the application space are going to do the best here, right? There, there's agree. so much less chance of them kind of getting commoditized down at the, you know, uh, what, undifferentiated heavy lifting. You guys yeah. are in a great position for that. I mean, do you, that's got to feel good that you're that much farther ahead and then you've got this global footprint with Amazon and, and with everything else to build on top of. Yeah, I agree with you. We feel like at the core of any digital experience is the application and we're poised to help the application developer and the companies deliver amazing experiences. And I don't think it's a, I think the analytics piece will get very interesting. I guess what, what I look at is if I envision this conference in two years, will software analytics be the story that people are telling? Real time, cloud, what kind of data can you get out? That could be very interesting. Yeah, yeah. So the customer environments, talk about your customers, and, and, and there's this notion of any application on any device on any cloud, yes. that certainly sounds like VMware, that's Pat Gelsinger's uh, pitch, but also that's what customers kind of look at that. I want to see, they don't want to get locked into one cloud, they might want to do Azure, they want to do AWS, you guys have some news here about AWS, so we we're do. at the AWS show, yeah. but there's also other clouds out there. Is there an, like a stop gap for you guys in terms of how many clouds you support or criteria for levels of cloud you support, or is it customer driven? It's really customer driven. I, you know, my feeling is we should just be open to all the public cloud and private cloud providers. And when you think of, when we think about our whole ecosystem strategy, it is based on this idea of open APIs so that people can connect their data in and New Relic can help visualize that data. As it relates to Amazon, we did make a really exciting announcement this week about giving deeper visibility to an EC2 environment and bringing that data into New Relic. And I, if you're open, then you can bring the best solutions to the application developers and to these companies that are trying to deliver them. And I think that'll be the core principle that we will continue to drive forward and forward and forward. So obviously on that note, I'll just ask you, what do you think about open data? Because this is a concept that people now are, well the pioneers have certainly been involved in open data. You know you guys love open source but the data hoarding mentality of the old world was like, I don't want to share my data. Is, should data be open? Obviously security can wrap around sensitive data. Yeah. What's this, I, what's your take on open data? Do you have a philosophy or I, opinion on that? Or? I'm not, I don't have a philosophy yet. I mean, I, I believe you know, customer data should be secure. Um, what they open up, I think that's a company brand decision. Yeah. And or platform. And or platform A final decision. question for you. What do you think of the show? For the people who are watching yeah. here live and on demand, couldn't make it. Yeah, I think What's it's fantastic. What's the vibe of the show? What's the big, big thing here? What's happening? I think it's fantastic. I mean, if you look at Amazon, they're amazing. What they delivered this morning in terms of what they're doing, who the customers are and where they're going, it's just incredible. Yeah. If you're not here, I wish you were here, um, but watch the keynotes and, um, Enjoy it. I mean, it's, it's a whole yeah. brave new world. Okay, and so what's next for you guys? You have an event coming up. Yeah, um, we When do. is that event? So get, we a, have, get a plug for the event. Okay, thank you. So we have our own reInvent. We call it Future Stack. It's about that modern stack. It's in San Francisco, November 9th through the 11th. We're going to have every data nerd from around the world there, and we're really excited. We have a very uh, similar speaker lineup. In fact, a lot of the speakers that were here at AWS on stage today will be speaking at Future Stack. Wow, because that's a great Amazon, company, big names. Big names, and Amazon and New Relic have a lot of, com um, AWS and New Relic have a lot of common customers. So you'll see some of the great speakers from today. Any sneak previews you can share on the show? Well, Name. Joe today did an awesome job, and I think if you look at the Future Stack lineup, you'll see that he'll be there. Okay. Um, uh, from and MLBAM, I don't know if you remember him. Love the months. MLB demos. Yeah, love he's an that. amazing guy. Totally geeking out on that. All right, great, and the dates again are? November 9th through 11th, San Francisco, California. All right, last year it was sold out. I remember hearing yeah. a good packed house. It was Standing like room only, yeah. We're fire marshals the same. everywhere, oh, like yeah. crazy. We're expecting the same this year. <laughs> Soon Moscone West, but they got that under construction. Right, Fairmont. <laughs> Hilary Coplow, McAdams, thank you for joining us on theCUBE and sharing your insight. We really appreciate it. Uh, congratulations on your success and good luck with your growth strategy. We'll be watching you guys and certainly look forward to, to hearing about future stack. This is theCUBE, you're watching SiliconANGLE TV's theCUBE. Go to siliconangle.tv where you'll see our guest of the week every week highlighted in a podcast and we will be at the Grace Hopper celebrations of women in, in computing in Houston. Big stage there at Dell World, at Oracle Open World. You'll see theCUBE everywhere. Keep watching. Of course, we're live in in Amazon reInvent in Las Vegas. We'll be right back after this short break.